Hello Calc Kids! Welcome back to another lesson in Calculus. This is Mr. Bean and today we're going to finish up our Unit 9 by looking at the area between two polar curves and how we have to figure out that area. And we're going to build this off of what we did in our last lesson. So as a reminder real quick, here's the area uh, that's bounded by a polar curve. We have one half and then from A to B or alpha to beta of R squared D theta. And then just remember that R is in terms of theta. So it's some function we'll say in terms of theta. That's a little theta in there. Okay, that even got worse. <laughs> Sorry, that's a theta. So that's what we did in our last lesson. Now today we're going to focus in on some things to watch for and which is the points of intersection, uh, which we did a lot last time, finding points of intersection, but then also symmetry. Can we make it easier on ourselves by recognizing symmetry? You'll see here in what, I, uh, what I'm talking about in just a second. So for our first example, we're going to find the area that's common between these to two polar curves. In other words, the area that overlaps these two curves. Sometimes the problem will not give you a graph. It's really nice when they give you a graph so you can have that visual representation. But if they don't give you the graph, then you may just have to graph it yourself and figure out what in the world they're talking about. So I pulled this up on my calculator and found that these are my two graphs. So now which one's which? Well, the red one is the smaller one with a radius of only two. And then the larger one has the radius of four, comes all the way out here to four. So what's the area that is overlapping here? This right here is what I'm talking about. In fact, let me use a different color yeah, and just kind of shade this in. So this is the area we're talking about and how do we find that area. So to start this off, my recommendation is you take your pen or pencil and you lay it down at the origin like so. And I'm going to draw this off coming off this direction. So I'm, I, for me, I've got an arrow here, but you can just use, lay your pen or pencil down. And then you start it at z an angle of zero. We start rotating around in a circle. So as we come up here, so right around here, halfway up is about pi over four. And then we rotate here and that's pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and then back to pi. So as we're rotating, we're gonna see here, this first part from the angle of zero until we get to right here that intersection point, from that first step to there, from angle zero to this angle, notice it's the red circle. The smaller circle would be the area that we'd be calculating out. And then after that, as we continue to move this thing around in a circle, from that angle to pi over two, it's the blue circle. See that here, this blue? So from here on, it's the blue circle. So really what we're doing is if we zoom in and look at this graph right here, we have two separate areas that we're calculating. So we're going to set up two different integrals for this. And in order, before we can do that, we have to figure out where these two things are equivalent to each other. So I'm gonna write down, when is four cosine theta equivalent to two sine theta? And when we solve that, I'll divide both sides by two, get a two over here, and then divide both sides by cosine, and you end up with two tangent theta. I would use a calculator here, do a tangent inverse of both sides. Tangent inverse of both sides would give you that the angle is 1.107. So that is this angle right here. It's the theta would be equal to 1.107. Now that lets me set up now my integral. So I'm going to say that the area equals one half angle zero to 1.107. And now which one am I doing? From angle zero, and we move this up to here. Notice which one is, uh, what graph is bounding that area? That is the red circle. So we would then say two sine theta, and that is all being squared. So it's one half r squared d theta plus, and now we do the other one. And the other one is, uh, one half the integral r squared and the integral is going from this mark here Until we get to pi over 2 so from there to pi over 2 and Then that will be give us the area of what's inside this blue circle so from 1.107 up until pi over 2 and then we do the uh, 4 cosine theta quantity squared yeah, sorry, you squeeze that all in. Now from here, if you were doing this by hand, that would be, get a little complicated. You'd have to use some special trig identities with sine squares and cosine squares and manipulate those. Some textbooks actually ask you to do that. I've never seen that on the AP exam where you have to go into depth on 
on manipulating them with some complicated trig identities. So what you're going to have to figure out is check with your teachers on whether they expect you to be able to do that or not. I will tell you that the, the practice that I'm providing, I think maybe one has you do it, but all the rest of them, you're just going to use the calculator after you set this up. So the important part is setting up the correct integral. And then from there, you can plug these in and use the calculator. So for this one, the area would be about 0 0.96 uh, one seven if I went four, so it's six two if I round, or six one if I truncate. So the important part here was recognizing this little line that I drew here, and how it separated it into two different areas depending on which graph was put the boundary on that area. Let's do another one that's kind of like that. So now we're going to find the common area between these two curves. So let's figure out what area am I talking about? That is this right here. So just kind of shade in this part. That's what I'm looking at. And now um, let me draw my, uh, oh yeah, first thing I'm gonna recognize is this is symmetrical, right? The left and right side is symmetrical. So what I really could do is just find the area of one side. So if I wanted, I could take just this piece of it here and find this area. If I can find that area, then I just double it and times it by two. So I'm gonna set up my, my area as one half of the area half of the area is going to equal whatever this is. So that's going to be one half integral from something to something. Let's see, what do we, how do I do this? Ah, let me show you with my little line that I'll draw. There, I got my line. So what happens here is I'm going to, instead of starting at the angle zero and working my way around like this, I'm going to actually go backwards pi over two. I'm going to start down here at negative pi over two and work my way around this direction. So if I start at negative pi over two and go all the way up to pi over two, that'll include all of this area. And then I can just times it by two. It looks like I'm just gonna go from negative pi over two until I get right there to zero, and then it's gonna change. Okay, so notice what's, this is the graph right here, the black one, the, the circle. That's the one that's binding the area in quadrant four. So from negative pi over two to zero. So let's do that real quick negative pi over two to zero. And that is this black circle here. So it's just two, two squared d theta, and then plus uh, one half integral of, and now I'm going to go from zero to pi over two. So let me show you that on my, with my line. So I'm at zero here and I'm going to go this way to pi over two. And which graph is it? It's this one right here. That's the graph that I'm including. It's this cardioid one, the blue one. So as I go from here and on up to pi over two, I would have the quantity squared of two minus two sine theta. That's the cardioid. Quantity squared d theta. So there is my setup. That's the hardest part of this. Uh, then if you could just plug this whole thing in a calculator, you'd end up with one half of the area. So again, why is it one half the area? I set it up to say one half because I knew it was only doing what I graphed here in blue, what I shaded in blue, and I need to do both sides. So half of it is going to be, uh, what is that? Three, I did this on my calculator already, 3.8539 times it by two to get rid of the, that. And then the whole area of everything that's bounded in that region is going to be 7.70, uh, seven, nine. So it could be seven or eight, depending if you round or truncate. All right, let's do another one. So with this one, the area that's going to be overlapping is going to be this region here. So something like this kind of lightly shade that in. Okay. Something like that. So you can see it's inside this circle. This is the black circle here, but then it's also inside the cardioid. So that's, it's got a couple of extra restrictions. Uh, so what we are going to end up needing is these point of intersections. We're going to need this point of intersection and this point of intersection. So do this off on the side, way off on the side here and just say negative six cosine theta would equal two minus two cosine theta. Let's add two cosine theta. That gives me negative four cosine theta equals two. Divide both sides by negative four. You get cosine theta equals negative one half. And now we can figure out wh what does theta equal. So theta is going to, when cosine is negative one half, so think about my unit circle. When is cosine a negative? It's over here in this quadrant, quadrant two or quadrant three. That's where cosine is negative. It's going to happen one step away from these top and bottom quadrangles. So it's going to happen at two pi over three, and then one, two, three, four pi over three. So four pi over three. 
but I'm gonna use some symmetry. So my focus is going to be, instead of doing the whole thing, I'm just gonna do this top portion of it from here to here. So you can see that I'm just gonna do this top. And then, so if I set this up, I would say that half of the area is going to equal. So I'm, I always like to start off with this one half to remind myself I only took half. Like if I, if I was doing only one of the four quadrants, I would might have to say one fourth. Just depends on, on how it's symmetrical. Uh, then I can start off by saying, let's let's figure out where's my starting point here. It's probably going to be zero, all right? One half, uh, one half r squared, so one half. Okay, I got to go back. Whatever I was just saying, sorry if the video just jumped. I need to clarify when I start to do these boundaries here because I just noticed something. So the, this cosine graph, if I were to graph this negative cosine theta, when I the angle of zero, if I grab my little thing here and I say that it, I usually would start here and work my way around. But this graph is actually, when you say zero, it's starting at this point right here. And so when you get to here, that is actually pi over two. This point right here, so that's zero. This is pi over four. This is pi over two. If you traced the graph, negative, co negative six cosine theta, if you traced that, you'd see it's starting here at zero and works its way around to here. So right there, where I'm starting and going up to this point, this is... So let me, let me repeat this. This is actually pi over two, and this is my two pi over three. So it's still this part right here, two pi over three, that is still a theta equals two pi over three right there. But I'm starting at pi over two. I don't want to start at zero because if I started at zero, that would be starting here and working my way around. So sometimes you might have to trace it on your graph just to make sure you've got the right starting point for it. So again, this one starts here at pi over two. That's where that point is right there. And then as it works its way around this, so that's pi over two, and then it works its way from here to here, from pi over two to there, that is, so let me just draw that angle completely out. So now I am just focusing in just on this little sliver right here. That's the integral that I'm setting up for this part. So it's from pi over two to two pi over three. Sorry, that's crammed in a little bit. And then that is the larger black circle. So that's negative six cosine theta quantity squared. So that's the first one. Now I'm going to add the next one. And the next one is from this line that way. So if I were to leave that line there, I'm looking at what's in red here. That's the area that I'm focused in on. And that one is going to be one half from two pi over three until I get to this pi here, all the way down there. That's just an angle of pi. Quantity two minus two cosine theta quantity squared. D theta, okay, this is kind of crammed in there. So then when you solve this whole thing, we end up with an area of 15.7079, depending on rounding or truncate. So that would be, you calculate this whole thing out and then you multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half. Or if you notice here, you could also just multiply by two right here and it crosses out all those one halves. Just depends on how you wanna work through it. But that would be the answer for this one. Okay, so that one's a fairly complicated one because you had to figure out where your boundaries were. And honestly, that is the hardest part of this. Remembering the one half, radius squared, and then getting your boundaries correct, and then depending on the symmetry. Okay, so let's do one more example, but this one's a little bit different uh, because it's going to be similar to what we did earlier in the year in unit eight when we had the area uh, and you had to subtract a gap in it. So this one would be where you have, this represents your, uh, your first function, your R1 curve, polar curve, and this would be your R2 polar curve. And so if you wanted to just figure out where, what is the shaded region of this portion of it right here, what is that area, you would have to take from the point of origin, you'd have to take the larger polar curve, and then you would subtract the smaller polar curve. So you'd subtract this gap here so you can get rid of it, and then that would leave you with what's left here. Okay, so very similar to what we did with two curves back in unit eight and finding area. So you would say the one half from A to B of R squared, but it's the second R, the larger one, the one that's further out, and then subtract the one that's on the inside. So this is different from the other ones we've been doing before because the other ones would just set, as we'd go around in a circle, you just go around in a circle and you would figure out where the outside region is changing on that curve. But this one, you subtract what's on the inside here. Okay, so now this is a simplified version of that. They're exactly the same thing, just depends on how you wanna set it up. Just be careful, you only use this second step. You can only use this if 
you are subtracting the uh, the gap here that's missing. Just don't forget that it's each individual has to be squared. So that's why sometimes it's better to set it up like this because you're going to always remember that it's r squared here, r squared here. Sometimes a common mistake would be to forget to square both of them and you accidentally do a squared there. That would be wrong. So just be careful about that. Don't put your quantity squared on that. All right, let's, so after you have that written down, let's go on and do our final example. So on this one, I've already got it shaded for us. So we're just trying to figure out this portion of it. And I see that it is symmetrical. So I could just take this area here, right? I could just take this part of it and, uh, and then times it by two. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up here. I know that I'm gonna take half of the area and then figure out uh, my boundaries here. So it's one half and then the integral from, so it looks like if this is the point of origin here, it looks like I'm just going from zero to pi, not pi, I mean pi over two. So let me show you, draw my quick little line and I'll move that. So I'm going from the angle of zero up until here until we get to, to pi over two. So I'm basically doing the circle, this the circle with a radius of one. I'm just taking that that circle from here to here, and then I'm subtracting this cardioid on that same exact interval. So that's why I can just set this up as the circle, which is going to be one squared, and then subtract the cardioid, which is going to be one minus cosine theta squared. And that's all the theta. So I could have separated this and done it individually, but since I could just see that it's on that same interval, the outside of it was the circle one and the inside of it was the cardioid one minus cosine theta. So now that is only half of it, right? So you just gotta remember that I'm, I've only done half so far. Now what we could actually do is just get rid of this one half. See how we have a one half on both sides? If you just multiply both sides by two, then it's gone. And then that lets us go straight to an answer by just plugging this whole thing in a calculator. And we get 1.2146. And then depending if you want to round it up to five or just truncate it and leave it as four, it's up to you. So that is the area of the gray shaded, not just the blue, right? It's not half of it because we already went ahead and got rid of the one half. And that's why that works out to give us the full answer. Now I do want to show you that you could, instead of just doing what's in blue, you could do all of the gray by starting down here, which would change the lower limit. So instead of a zero, you would start at negative pi over two and go up to pi over two. That's how that would work. You'd start at negative pi over two, go all the way up to pi over two, and then you would not You would just say the a equals, and then you'd use that whole thing, but just change that lower boundary. And that's why on the multiple choice, they'll be a little bit tricky because you might have this part of it correct, the integrand part, you might have this correct, but then you have to look at the lower and upper limits to see if you did that one correctly to make it match for the shaded region. All right, that's it. We've just finished up unit nine. So this is Mr. Bean signing off. I'll see you back in unit 10. And rock that master check.